Hey y'all, it's Cindy. Today is a difficult discussion, but I think it's important to have it. Feeling like a burden or inconvenience to our family and friends, it's something a lot of us can relate to, whether you are blind or visually impaired like myself, or have a different disability or chronic illness that you are managing and coping, a lot of us experience these difficult feelings. I would love for my channel to be just nothing but happiness and optimism and tell you that all my tips and hacks work for everyone and they're gonna make your life easy and all that stuff, but that's not honest. It's not true to life and that's what I want my channel to be about, you know? I, I believe you have to face the difficult things to, to grow and to move past them. You may relate to this or not. You may be a friend or family member of someone with a disability who has been expressing some of these feelings and you're looking for some insights. Uh, or you know, maybe you are just really, really struggling with these feelings and so I hope you join this discussion. I hope you pop your comments and anything you have to say or add down below. And if you can relate, I hope you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. So guys, let's get to it while the weather is nice and have a difficult chat. Before we dive in super deep here guys I have to throw my disclosures out there and that is y'all know I am NOT a mental health professional I'm just a mom <laughs> I'm just trying to raise two toddlers I have been legally blind for 30 plus years and so I'm no stranger to feeling like a burden to feeling like a constant inconvenience to everyone I love and care for to be transparent it's it's not where i'm currently at these are not feelings that i am experiencing at present and that just allows me to have this discussion with you guys that allows me to find i guess enough courage to put this out there for you all uh, in hopes that it helps but i remember vividly feeling this way as a teenager as a young adult and as a wife I think it's best to start with identifying what is the trigger, what is the catalyst and that causes us to have these feelings. And of course, it is different for everyone. There's a thousand and one different experiences and situations that will cause people to feel these types of feeling. I, I am, have been blessed in that this has not been my experience, but I know it is for a lot of people with disabilities. So I'm going to throw it out there just for awareness. And that is that some people unfortunately are surrounded by people that um, are abusive maybe, they are ableist, they are not compassionate, they are not nice people and they just don't understand and maybe they're bitter because they feel obligated to help individuals that need help. People purposefully want them to feel this way and shame them and treat them horribly because they need help. So if that is anything that you can relate to, guys, I hope and pray that you are able to separate yourself from those people because it is unhealthy. You are worth more, you deserve better as a human being. No one has the right to treat anyone with a disability as lesser uh, because we need extra assistance. So with that being said, <laughs> I'm gonna move on to my more personal experience. Number one, I found that I felt more like a burden and inconvenience when I had needs and wants that I had to heavily and consistently depend and rely on others for. Especially when I sensed that it was a sacrifice, you know, it, that it was out of their way kind of thing and it was something that, that happened continuously. It's like, you know, the little things that just add up over and over and then you just spiral downward and in, into a dark place it's hard you know it's hard uh, 
um, to, you want to shield them from your disability. It's sort of a natural thing. We love and we care for them and we don't want our disability and the fight and the struggle of it to impact negatively the ones we love and care for, right? Um, a second thing that I will add, guys, and you may relate to this, you may not, it may be something to just put on your radar for later because it has to do with more mature relationships. And that is, I would feel like a burden and inconvenience at times when I sensed an imbalance in our relationship. Especially like, like for example, with past boyfriends that I've lived with or and, and currently in my marriage. Uh, I think the more a relationship grows, more responsibilities, you, you, more you know, life things that you share together, especially when kids are involved, it's easy to sense this imbalance in the relationship that you, know, you are just not able to do and give and provide as much as your partner. And that imbalance between give and take can really get to you. It can just feel like, gosh, like what am I bringing to the table here? And it's like you see little value in anything that you do, it's like it, nothing is good enough or is equal to what your partner is doing and is able to do. Even if they don't, they're not purposefully doing or saying anything, it's just something that you sense. So how have I worked through some of these difficult feelings? First, I have a lot of tips and things that I'm definitely going to throw at you <laughs> in a minute, but I want to first address a very important part, and that is that you got to want it, just like with anything, any major struggle, if you're wanting to get through it, you got to want to get through it, and you got to work at it. I realize that you can't measure the value that we bring to other relationships. You know, people who love and care for us, love and care for us. You know, they shouldn't be keeping a tally, you know, and keeping score. And you shouldn't either. I found myself doing that. So you, you gotta stop things like that because we are worthy people. And it's just part of life that some people can give and do more than others. Right, And I truly feel that just because we may not be able to give and do as much as others doesn't mean we are lesser people, that we are less lovable, that we don't contribute in other ways that are just as beautiful in relationships. So there, at times there's not going to feel like an equal balance there and that is okay. Accept it and know that you contribute in other ways. There are other things about you that you may not even realize about yourself that people love and care for in you. It's gonna take work, it's gonna take effort, and it's something that you have to, to do on your own, unfortunately. Not necessarily alone, right? It's, it's, that's two different things. <laughs> uh, you don't have to be alone in getting through it but you have to realize that the work is, is there for you to do. I hope that makes sense. Okay, moving on. Here are things that I did though, things that I put into practice that helped me get through and avoid triggering these feelings in my relationship. So number one is I would prioritize my needs and my wants and know that everything on that list is not going to get accomplished, right? I mean, there's just sacrifices that we as individuals with disabilities have to make. We have to give it up and let it go. We're not gonna be able to get what we want. I mean, we naturally, I mean, like I just can't get in the car and go do and grab and get and buy and whatever when I want to do it. And so I would prioritize, okay, what do I need? All right, yes, I would love to go out and get a new outfit or a new makeup or a new toy for my kids, but I have a doctor's appointment that I need to prioritize first, that kind of thing. The second thing I would do is strategically plan and be convenient as possible. Sometimes this means that you just plant little seeds with people, 
you know I if this doesn't apply to me so much now because we live in a small town and unfortunately all I have is my husband currently to depend on but when we lived in the city you know I had church friends I had family members other friends you know they, they understood and so I would plant little seeds hey Christmas is coming up if you're ever going shopping pick me up if you can kind of thing planting seeds for in the future knowing that I would really love to go shopping this week, but it may not happen. But it's so convenient when people are doing it on their time and on their schedule and it's not an extra trip for them and they remember to call you up. Don't take it personally though, guys, uh, with this strategy. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. People just go spontaneously, they forget to call you and it's that was something I had to learn not to take personally. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. But strategically plan if you know like, hey, someone picks up a click list every Thursday after work, maybe, you know, you can say, hey, is it okay if I schedule mine at the same time? Do you mind picking both of them up at the same time? That kind of strategic, convenient planning can go a long way. A third thing I would do was, was pick the best person for the job kind of thing and not rely solely on your comfort person, your go-to person. One of the things I learned that in a way that I could give back to my husband was finding other ways to meet my needs and wants and not solely come to him every single time. And that's an easy trap to fall in, guys, for your go-to person. It's easy to just always rely on, rely on them. But he finds it so helpful when I try to find other resources when I try to plan a trip, you know, whether it's with an Uber or Lyft or something and I find a babysitter for the kids and I just plan everything out without him. Or if there's other church members, like I say, or friends or anyone else that you can rely on, kind of, I guess, spreading out your asks for help as much as you can so that it's not all piling onto one person, that can also be a great thing uh, for your relationships and to avoid feeling like you're a burden on one person. Sorry guys, I had to pop inside for a little while. Uh, just It was just getting too much for me out there and windy, all that jazz. So. This one was really difficult for me. It's something that I still continuously have to work on. And my husband is the one that <laughs> helped me be, become more aware of this, and that is communication. Guys, people can't read our minds, and they're not gonna anticipate every need and want. We have to communicate those needs and wants, and we have to realize that when we communicate our needs and wants, it's unfair for us to think that they're just gonna drop everything to address them. And so, you know, with my husband, I, I still to this day want to shield him and not, you know, overly ask too much because he has a lot on his plate. He's a full-time employee. He's working on his doctorate at the same time and managing all the little house things that I can't see and fix and things. So I try not to bombard his plate, and there are times when I don't ask for things when I should, and I don't communicate things to him when I should. So it's unfair when we start to just get flustered and you know we've bottled all that up, we've we've shielded them for some, and to the point where we explode, and that's not fair to them. So that's a personal thing for me. You may or may not relate to that, guys. That's a personal kind of personality thing, the way I am. I, I want to protect everyone as much as in my own way. And when I do, sometimes it, it is not always a good outcome. And I have to be aware of that and I have to check my communication and making sure that I don't bottle that up in my efforts to protect them. So if I have anything else to add, I will do so in the comment section. So be sure to read and check that out uh, with a screen reader, if you're like me. 
But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you check out some of my other videos on my channel, such as my blind mom hacks, which I will put a link above my head. You'll see all kinds of different videos on my channel, guys, that I hope benefit and uh, re you can relate to just as much. So consider liking and subscribing, and I will catch you next time.